All right, so 28 questions on the exam, just like last time. Uh, projectile motion and in and uh, Newton's laws. There's gosh, five or six projectile motion problems, uh, four or five projectile motion problems that are calculations, and then the rest are conceptual, and then similar for the 2D forces. You're going to see some of those. You will see those problems like you start and end at the beginning at the same height. So we can work through some of those if y'all like. I know that we've done it a lot, but it helps to see it again and again. Uh, and then you'll also see one of those where you start and go horizontally. And then you'll see one or two others that are variations on those, but are similar to ones that we've worked before. Okay. Uh, you'll also see 2D forces. You'll see 1D forces, calculations on both of those, like the elevator problem, like the object sitting on the ground, and you have forces pushing on it, how fast, what is the acceleration, the rate of acceleration. So you'll see some like that as well. You'll see concept test questions. I posted the PowerPoints online so you can see those. Also, if you look on the OP quiz link, online participation quiz link, uh, those of you in the in-class section, you don't usually go there, but you can see video solutions to those concept tests as well, so where I describe it in more detail. Okay. Um, Concept test. Oh, there are three or four OpenStax questions on the test. The chapter three OpenStax was kind of difficult, so I didn't really pull much from it. Though the last several of that 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 assignment are okay. You should have looked at those. But those first four problems on chapter three, those are hard problems, weren't they? Mathematically, they were difficult. So I wouldn't focus on those too much. Focus on those typical problems like we've worked through. Yes. Yeah, you can see your correct answers on your OpenStax tutor, am I right? That's true. Yeah. Uh oh. Yeah, so uh, if you have trouble with that, just shoot me an email and send me a screenshot. It's helpful. Sorry, my view of it is different from your view. I'm sorry, I'm not real helpful, but shoot me an email if you have issues. They do get feedback on those, so it is, that can be helpful on how to work out the problems. Okay? What do you want to look at first? Yeah, Rachel? Uh, Chapter 4? Yeah, of course. Which ones? <laughs> Any of them. Okay. Uh, which one is that? Do you have it printed out? Can I see? Number four. Okay. Yeah. This is a good problem. Can I? I'll, I'll get this back to you in just a second. Uh, yeah, the chapter four open stacks are actually, I mean, they're a good level of difficulty. Five kilogram box is at rest on the floor. So this is number four from our open stacks chapter four. Uh, that's chapter four B or A? This is B, isn't it? I think this is B. Uh, five kilogram box is at rest it's on the floor. It's not an inclined plane. The coefficient of static friction, it says, is... Uh, 0.4 and a horizontal force of 50 newtons is applied to the box, will it move? And so I was just asking, is this 50 newtons, is it big enough to overcome the static frictional force? Oh, what was the mass of that box? Okay, so the mass is 5 kilograms. Okay, so our first step is to find what is the static frictional force. And if the static frictional force is bigger than 50 newtons, that thing ain't moving. Like, you're just not pushing on it hard enough. So in order to do that, we need to know what is the normal force. And in this case, when there are no other forces acting on it, the normal force is equal to the weight. So Fn is equal to Fw, which is equal to 5 times 10, or 50 newtons. So that's our normal force is 50 newtons. And then Fs is equal to mu s times the normal force, which is uh, 0 0.4 times 50. See, 4 times 50 is 200, so that's 20 newtons. 
So Fs is 20 newtons. That means, is it going to move or not? Yes, it will move. In fact, the, uh, the frictional force that's going to be at play here is not the static frictional force, but it's going to be the kinetic frictional force. So the friction force, if you wanted to find the frictional force, then you would have to know the coefficient of kinetic friction. Well, let's just say that we know the coefficient of kinetic friction. Let's say that mu k is equal to 0.2, right? Because mu k is always smaller than mu s. Kinetic friction is smaller than static friction. And so if we know that mu k is 0.2, let's ask another question. Let's ask, what is the acceleration then? Well, I have to find out what is fk. fk is going to equal to 0.2 times 50, which is 10 newtons. And so I know then that the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be 50. That's this force. Minus 10 is that force and so the sum of the forces is 40 newtons then that's equal to mass times acceleration so a is 40 over m or 40 over 5 kilograms which is 8 meters per second squared so two steps the question was just asking is it going to move or not and you find that by finding what is the static frictional force is 20 newtons so you have to push with at least 20 newtons in order to make that thing move. But you're pushing with 50 newtons, so that's plenty to make it move. And when you uh, apply 50 newtons, the kinetic friction now takes over. Kinetic friction, we created a separate problem. Kinetic friction, we said, is 0.2. And uh, the kinetic friction, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. So the kinetic frictional force is 10 newtons. The sum of the forces in the x direction is 50 minus 10, or 40 newtons, and then F equals ma, finding our acceleration. That would be a fine problem for the test. All right. Uh, other problems on that chapter four homework? Yeah, Laura. Oh, your A is a personal. Let's just take a look. problem where uh, it's important let me let me I'm not gonna work it but let me address it okay she had a problem where he had a projectile it was something like this right and it wanted to know what is this range right right you found the max height y'all should be able to do that but didn't it ask for the range? Huh? Oh, okay. Well, then it asked for this. Yeah, you also be able to do this. Okay. So we want to know what is this height, y, and then we also want to know what is this x position right here. I'll call that x. Uh, the angle was 75 degrees, I think. What was the velocity? 70 meters per second. All right, this is really just sort of a, a part of a problem, like where we start here and we follow and we go through there. It's just sort of like half that problem. So I want to know what is the maximum height, and then I also want to know what is the x position at that maximum height. Now, Laura, that problem also had a, sep a third part, I think that I'm not going to address here. Is that OK? OK. So um, give myself some space here. The way I approach this is I say, well, Vy up here is equal to 0. And then I can find the time at the top. So Vy is equal to v naught y plus a times t. 0 is equal to 70 sine 75. minus 10 times t. <laughs> C 
So that's 67 minus 10t. So t is equal to 6.7 seconds. That means that at this point, 6.7 seconds have elapsed. Now, if we want to know this position right here, then I say x is equal to vx times t. Now, usually in these problems, we're looking for the total range. But in this problem, it wanted to know the x position at this point. Where was the x position when it, at the very top of the trajectory? And so here, I'm going to use t top, not t total. Usually, I'd use t total because I need to know the overall range. And probably you're going to have to find the overall range tomorrow, so be prepared for that. But here I'm going to use 6.7 instead of 13.4, which is twice t top. Uh, so here I would say 70 cosine of 75 times 6.7 seconds. And that's equal to... ...121 meters. Okay, that is the x position, 121 meters. Additionally, that problem asked, I believe, what is the y height? What is this value equal to? In order to do that, you say y is equal to v naught t, v naught y t, plus one half a y t squared. And so it'd be v naught y, which is 70 cosine 75, or not cosine, right? 70 sine 75 times 6.7 minus 5, 6.7 squared. Minus 5 is half of negative 10. And then that is whatever it is, I'm not sure. But that would be this type right here. No, no, no. I mean, yes, yes, yes. Know how to do these projectile motion problems. Because you're going to have. Uh, several that are just these type of problems, ground level to ground level, asking you several things about that motion. And so if you know those back and forth, those three questions you got, you know, in the bag, as they say. And you know, a lot of the others are just conceptual questions that you should be able to crank out pretty quickly. Okay? Just a second, Rachel. Laura, is that okay? I know I didn't really answer your question. Did I? The part you got. Okay. Rachel? That's a good question. So that's the other type of question for projectile motion that you need to be able to work through. Y'all do these in lab, where you have a projectile. Look for words like horizontal or uh, theta equal to zero degrees, where you have something that you shoot out in a horizontal trajectory and it follows this path. And in this case, notice that the initial velocity is all in the x direction. So v naught is equal to v naught x is equal to v x. All of the velocity is in the x direction. And by the way, the velocity in the x direction doesn't change. So it will remain in that direction and with the same magnitude that it had originally. Whereas v naught y will be equal to zero in this case because there is no initial, it's not at an angle, so there is no y component. So it'll initially be zero, and then vy will gradually get bigger based on that acceleration due to gravity, negative 10 meters per second squared. So for every second, it's going to increase by 10 meters per second. 10 meters per second per second. That's what that means. Okay? All right. What else, y'all? Yeah. Questions? Savannah? Twenty-five? Okay. Um, you need to be prepared to do 2D problems. You might have one like this or you might not. I'm, I'm not going to tell you. But you could or you couldn't. But it's certainly, I don't, actually I don't even remember if you have one like this. But you need to know how to do 2D problems. Um, 
both inclined plane and one like this where the force is on a flat surface but it has a force off axis. So same process still applies. You draw your coordinate system like that. I have, then I label all my forces. I have F in that direction. I have FW here. I have FN here. And then I also have a, a frictional force. Uh, it is being, it is moving, so I have a frictional force FK. Now I'm going to redraw my coordinate system over here. And I'm going to draw my forces, but I'm going to re resolve them in the X and Y directions. So FN and FK are still on axis FW2. But this force, 50 newtons, 50 cosine 30 in this direction, and 50 sine of 30 on the y-axis. That's right. You only change the angle, take the complementary angle, 90 minus 30 in this case. You only do that on an inclined plane, not on a flat surface, only on the inclined plane. But make sure that you do that on the inclined plane, otherwise you're going to get them wrong. Yeah. Right. Good, good call. So usually on the inclined plane, this force is like down towards the earth, right? That's our force weight. But in this case, instead of pulling down, you're pulling up. And so this force has an x component that's in this direction, but notice the y component is in this direction. You're pulling up, you're not pulling down. Now if this force was pulling down, that y component would be in the negative y direction. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if this guy, instead of pulling like this, he was pulling down like this. It would be up. It would be down, yeah. All right. So, um, yeah. If you were pulling down, would the normal force also increase? It would, yeah. So here, we'll see that the normal force is actually decreased from not having the force. But if you were pulling down, it would be increased. There are some problems like that on some of the old tests where the normal force is actually increased. Um, OK, we clear so far? Or we're looking for the acceleration. So in order to get the acceleration, we need to consider these forces. The sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to mAx. That is 50 cosine 30, to my positive x, minus Fk is equal to mAx. But I don't know Fk, so I need to figure out what Fk is. And in order to do that, I take the y motion. Some of the forces in the y direction are 50 sine 30, plus Fn minus Fw is equal to zero, in which case I would need to find um, Fn. So Fn will equal to Fw minus 50 sine 30. Often Fn is equal to the weight when you're on a flat surface, but here it's actually less than the weight. So that's going to be 40 uh, minus 25 which is 15 newtons. So that's my normal force. And now the uh, frictional force, Fk, is mu times the normal force. Mu was a half, so it's going to be equal to 7.5 newtons. What I did there is I found my normal force by doing the sum of the forces in the y direction. Then once I find my normal force, I multiply it times mu. The coefficient of kinetic friction, which is given in the problem, times the normal force, and that gives me 7.5 newtons. So now I can put this in up here. I get 50 cosine 30, uh, which is going to be 43 newtons, minus 7.5 newtons, equals the mass, which is 4, times AX. 43 divided by 4, I get 8.9, uh, not newtons, meters per second squared. Uh, so B would be the right answer there. That was right? That's the right answer? <laughs> That's, that problem has a lot of steps in it. That would, you could see a problem like that. I would probably break it into more than one problem, make it into a couple of problems, or maybe even three, where you have to find these things 
separately because there's a lot of time that goes into working that problem. I know that I gave it here as one problem, but on our test, I'll probably make it more than that. Mallory? Is it regarding this? It's the next step, so I can wait until. Hold on just a second. Is that who asked that one? Are we okay with this? I forget who asked. Yeah, it was you. Oh, was you, Savannah? Is that okay? All right. Mallory? I should just. Okay, let me. Fall 15, 21. Uh, consider a block that is rest on an inclined plane. They have frictional, normal, and gravitational forces. Okay, which of these describes the normal force? On an inclined plane, my block, on a flat surface, the normal force is equal to the weight. But on an inclined plane, only a component of the weight gives you the normal force. So is the normal force, it's not equal to the weight. Is it bigger or smaller? It's smaller, right? So N will be less than Mg because only a component of that. Actually, uh, the normal force is going to be equal to the weight times the sine of 90 minus theta. Okay? Those are sort of useful things to remember that the normal force, especially if you MCAT people, the normal force is always the weight times the sine of 90 minus theta. And um, the acceleration down the inclined plane is always, if there are no other forces, if there's no friction, no other forces acting, like just the block sliding down the plane, is always going to be g times the cosine of 90 minus theta. Don't memorize that for the test tomorrow. Go through the process of drawing out the vectors and and uh, looking at your coordinate system because this this will always apply for us. This may or may not apply. Like if there's friction, this won't apply. If there are other forces acting, this won't apply. But if it's just a block sliding down the incline, it will. Yeah. I forget you. Kylie? No. Kylie. Kylie. Awesome. Right. But it's even if you're 16. On this test? Yeah. Mallory, did that answer your question? Mallory, did that answer your question? Okay, yeah, so gosh, a lot of people have asked me about this. A uh, woman who weighs 700 newtons, because what? Because it's tricky? Is that what somebody said? It's not true. It's a good question. So a woman weighs 700 newtons. By the way, that means that her mass is 70 kilograms, right? 700 newtons is 70 kilograms. She steps onto a scale that's in an elevator, and the elevator begins to accelerate. And she now weighs 500 newtons according to the scale. So let's just do this. This woman, she's very block like. Uh, she weighs 500 newtons. What that means is that the normal force is equal to 500 newtons. That's what this means according to the scale, that the scale reads her being 500 newtons. However, we know that her actual weight is 700 newtons. So we have this un imbalance of forces. And we know that that has to be because of some acceleration. We can figure out that acceleration. The sum of the forces is equal to ma. That's 500 minus 700 is equal to the mass, which is 70 kilograms, times a. So a is equal to negative 200 over 70, which is about negative 3. So it has to be b, uh, 2.9 downward. We should have been able to get rid of these because we know if we're in an elevator and we're going up that it feels like we're heavier than we actually are. But this lady feels lighter. Like you're getting an elevator and it drops down really quick and ooh, you feel lighter for just a moment because you're accelerating downward. Okay? It's a pretty fast elevator actually at three meters per second squared. Is that clear? Who asked that? Yeah, Christian? Right, so um, it, the normal force in, in the elevator, it only changes when it accelerates downward. Um, I don't have it. It's because of Newton's second law. Can I answer like that? Is that okay? 
why that seems very philosophical or how can it it's it works out mathematically that the sum of the forces is equal to ma usually a is equal to zero right if you're in an elevator it's either not moving or it's moving at a constant speed and when a is equal to zero then fn minus fw is equal to zero but if a is some non-zero value then fn minus fw they're not equal to one another that if it's non-zero and so that's that's what allows us to have things like weightlessness if you go up in a plane and, and then it drops then you feel weightless because there's no normal force acting upon you because your acceleration is equal to the acceleration due to gravity. And so this MA would cancel out with this FW and FN would just be equal to zero. And that's what weightlessness is, that your normal force is zero. You're no longer touching the floor. Does that answer your question? I know that's not a good answer, but that's the best I can do. So like if the elevator is going on really fast, the normal force would actually be heavier than Right, you would feel really heavy. You feel like you're being pulled down, uh, but elevators don't usually go that fast. So that's you ever been in one of those things that spins around at the fair, the fireman's fair? That's a similar thing. You feel like you got a force pushing up against you. We'll talk about that. That's something different, but it's a similar thing that you're accelerating, and so it feels like you're being pushed up against the wall. The normal force actually increases. Okay. My mom was on one of those things once and somebody threw up on it. She, I mean, she's, she died, but she, uh, not, not in that incident. <laughs> but she used to tell that story a lot. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Um, on this test, ball 15? Number for the horizontal component of the velocity? Just saying, just with those answer choices and being like, is there a chance where that could be an answer? Well, it could be, it could be this one. This isn't the right answer, right? A's not, the right answer here is E. That's the right answer here. No, it's E. What idiot was doing the video? <laughs> it's not horizontal. Right? It's 25 degrees above the horizontal. So this thing is, is shot up like this. And so the x component of the velocity, v naught x, is equal to 100 cosine of 25. No, well, the answer's not a. Seriously, I put a. Yeah. No, we did not. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a. Why don't you say anything? Oh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. I hear what you're saying. And that guy wasn't an idiot, but this guy is an idiot, huh? Okay, let me confuse you a little bit more. So this is uh, what this is doing. Andre, thank you. I understand, even though I was interrupting you. Um, it says that at the highest point in its trajectory, its speed is 100 meters per second. But at the highest point in the trajectory, Vy is equal to zero. So that means Vx is equal to 100. So here, it's 100 meters per second. But that's what it's asking. What is Vx? And so it's going to be 100 meters per second. Since it's in the horizontal direction, it's not going to change. So since it's telling you it's 100 meters per second, it means like 100 meters per second is the answer. Since it's your horizontal velocity, yes. it just doesn't change. Yes. 
So if they didn't say at the highest point of the trajectory, like if that was not in it, then it would be 100 cosine 25, but because you do say it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a, it's a good question. I mean, I got it wrong twice, right? So <laughs> but it's a good question because it, it tests if you know that what happens to the velocity up at the top. You need to know sort of what happens to the velocity of the object as it travels through the space. Okay? Okay, so if it's but, dead, speed is 100. If the initial speed is 100, like I just said, the initial velocity of this object is 100 meters per second. 25 At 25 degrees, then the right answer would be E. But here, that's not what it says. It says the velocity at the top is 100 meters per second, or the speed at the top is 100 meters per second. And then you say, oh, at the top, all you have is Vx. You don't have any Vy. And so Vx is what it is at the top, 100 meters per second. This is true, like right? this is right. Everything that other guy said two minutes ago, that's not right. Okay? Is that clear? If I asked, if I told you that the initial speed V naught is 100 meters per second at 25 degrees, and I asked you what is V naught Y, that would be 100 sine 25. Okay? Is that clear? Okay. What else, y'all? Any more on this test? I'm just going to sort of skim through here. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. So if I have a small car and a big car, the big car will require a bigger force. To, yeah, because, you know, F equals MA. If M goes up to keep the same acceleration, I have to have a bigger force. Okay? What else, folks? Another exam, you want to look at another one, or is there one on this one that we want to, where to go? Want to look at some of these? Yeah. What's your name? Yeah, of course. What's your name? Desi, right. You'll have one of these. I have an object that comes off, let's give it a speed, say 30 meters per second. And it follows a trajectory like this. You'd be looking for the word horizontal or theta equals zero, like I said. And I would give you, say this, we'll say that this is, I don't know, 10 meters. And I ask you, what is the time or what is the range? You're going to have this problem for certain. Uh, let's say, let's find x because that actually requires you to find the time. So your first step is to find t. On these problems, unlike the ones where you start at level ground, end at level ground, these, you take a little bit different tack. You consider the y displacement, not the y velocity at the top. Uh, the reason you do that is because v naught y is equal to zero. And it's just easy to work out because you don't have to use the quadratic. Then you say y is equal to v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. Uh, v naught y is zero, so this whole thing goes away, and I get negative 10, you know, because I have zero here, negative 10 here, is equal to negative 5 t squared. And so t is the square root of 2, which is 1.4 seconds. Now that I know that, I um, find x. That's equal to vx t. There's no angle. Or the angle is 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. So Vx is 30 times t. 
which is 1.4 seconds. No doubling it or any of that business. The time is the time. The time to get from here to here is the same as the time to get from there out to here. So that's uh, 30, 42, 42 meters, meters, I think, is that right? Or 40, it would be 40 meters uh, on the test to keep proper sig figs. Yes, you will have to do that. So make sure y'all can do it okay. Yeah. Can you do one where it's like, you want to find two phosphors and then double it and then... Sure, you'll have to do one of those. In fact, there's one of those on the test, and there are two or maybe even three questions regarding it. So no surprises, hopefully. I don't want any surprises. I give you the angle, say 30 degrees, give you some initial speed, say 50 meters per second, and that's all I'd give you. And ask you to find several things. I could ask you to find X. I could ask you to find Y, I could ask you to find T top, I could ask you to find T total, any one of those things, okay? So, what's my first step? I need to find what? Time. I need to find the time. It's not given. So, my first step is to find T top. And I do that by saying VY at the top is equal to V naught Y plus AYT, that's T top. Zero, the y component of the velocity goes to zero at the top. Uh, 50 sine 30 is 25. This is 50 sine 30 minus 10 t top. So t top equals 2.5 seconds. So now if I want to know why. I would say y equals to v naught y t top plus one half a y t squared. Fifty sine thirty times two point five. I don't double it here because at the top that is the time, two point five seconds. Minus 5 times 2.5 squared. And that is whatever it is, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, both of these are T top. Because these equations, this one and this one, they'll give you the Y position or VY at any particular time. So if I ask you what is the velocity of the Y position at a particular time, and I give you the time, that's easy. You just plug in the time, and it'll tell you exactly where it is. So, like, if I give you, if I say the time here is one second, then you would say, and I want another y position. You just plug in one second. That's what this equation does. This kinematics equation. It tells you the position as a function of time. It's a good question. Okay. So here, if I wanted to know x, is that where I was? Yeah. If I want to know x x is equal to vxt, vx is uh, 4.3, no that's not right, forty three, excuse me, forty three. Forty-three times t, but here I don't use two point five. I use what? I use five seconds because over here I have five seconds, and so that's two hundred fifteen meters, or probably two ten, or two hundred even for my sig figs. All right, you're gonna have to do one of those. Make sure that you can. Yeah, wish. Forty-three. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just sort of glossed over that. 43 is my velocity in the x direction. It's v naught x is equal to v naught times cosine of 30. And so that's 50 cosine 30. That's equal to 43. Let me remind you, can, Rebecca, can I say one thing? Is it about this? All right, go ahead. Is 
starting at the top and just going down, but if it's like a parabola, we have to... Um, right. In this case, v not y is not zero. But if I have an object that's going out horizontally, it's all in the x direction. So here, v not y is zero. And it's true at the top, right? At the top, you have the same situation. In fact, the problem where we're going out horizontally, the problem where we're going out horizontally, it's just this half of the problem. Right? We just forget about this. This is exactly the same as that problem. Pardon me? So if there's a degree in the problem, then v not y is not zero. But if there's no degree, then v not y is zero. That's correct. Okay. Okay. Can I just, I just want to remind you, I think I've said this, but I think it's good practice, one, that you just sort of follow all these procedures as you work through the problems and not try to memorize how to work particular problems because then you'll just get all mixed up on the exam. Just remember the procedure that you go through for each one. And the procedures, there are two procedures for projectile motion and then for forces. Uh, but also when you get your form on that little block that you have, write down the equations. There aren't that many. So just to remind you what they are, remember that Vx, or excuse me, uh, Vx, oh shoot, no, no, no. Yeah, Vx, or V naught x, is equal to V naught cosine theta. V naught y is equal to V naught sine theta. Many of you have sort of internalized this, but if you haven't, just write it down so it's in front of you. And then also you have those four equations for projectile motion. That is that y is equal to v naught y t plus one half a y t squared. v y is v naught y plus a y t. And then also uh, x is equal to v x t. So those are all the equations for projectile motion. These are really just our kinematics equations, but made special for projectile motion. And these are just our components of vectors. And then for forces, you got the sum of the forces is equal to ma. That's for the x direction and for the y direction. Remember, you split those up between x and y components. And then uh, f is equal to mu force normal. That's all the equations that we have. And they're ones that we've used a lot. That's why you don't have an equation sheet on this exam. You will on the next one, but not on this one. Okay? Rebecca? Um, we'll come back. Be careful going back to these older exams. Sometimes I do things a little differently in them. Number six. Somebody else had a question. Uh-huh. No, not necessarily T top. Like we just used that. We use that when we have this situation to find Y. Right? But we used it at a particular time at T top. In fact, you know, if I put in this time, t tote, what do you think I would find y to be? I'd find it to be 0. If I put in this time into this equation, I would find y to be 0. It'll give you the y position at any time. It's just at the top is a special place. If I know other information about the velocity of the object at the top, and that is that vy is equal to 0. That's why we focus on the top so much, because there's extra information there. Okay. So, so like if I add on, so if it was t top, it's always going to cancel at that first part, and v not y is always zero at the top. V y is zero at the top, not v not y. V not y is whatever it is at the beginning, but v y at the top. This is zero at the top, but v naught y is not. It's whatever it is. Remember, this is our v naught vector. I have v naught y, v naught x, and this vector represents v naught y. Rebecca, I'm coming back to your no, question. It's about this. Okay. Oh. What's up?
so I, like all the problems I've been working, and I just rework this one the way I would normally. Like I don't even use, like just tell me if this is right. I don't even look at, like I always cancel out P not Y T, and I end up getting negative but the same answer. And so I just know that that's, like they'll always um, do the same thing. Whether you do P not Y T and you plug it in or you don't. I, like, I still get the answer right, it's just a negative value. So if I just always cancel out B not YT and just do one half AYT squared, it always just gives me the negative value with the correct answer. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's worked in your situations, but it, should, it shouldn't always work. Okay. From what I'm hearing, it's correct. Okay. Because like I just worked that one that we just did, and like we got 31.25, but if you just do it my way, I got negative 30. Right. So I've just been getting like negative values. Yeah, don't do that. Okay. I think it might be because of the, the numbers that I use that it just sort of works out that way. I'm not sure. I'd have to look at it more closely. Okay. I need a ruler. I would love to have a ruler. And like I can walk around, and when I see y'all doing something wrong, you're on the test, I'm like, whack. <laughs> 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 right? Like, you know, teachers ever do that? No, it's like in the movies. I just don't do it anymore. I think they used to do it. Okay. <laughs> would y'all like that if I wrapped you on the knuckles on the test, if you were doing something wrong? Yes. Yeah, y'all would love that, wouldn't you? <laughs> what number are we on here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was from the concept test. Except I think it was like a Ferrari or something. And here it's a Subaru. This is, we used to have a Subaru, and this is back when we had a Subaru. Now we have a minivan. Which might seem lame, but a minivan, you can fit a sheet of plywood in the back of a minivan. Isn't that awesome? And then shut the door. We fit our tandem bike. We have a tandem. It's eight foot long. We put it in, and then we shut the door. Isn't that amazing? Eight foot long. It's like from here down to that screen. Huh? Yes, yeah, a tandem. All right. Um, you just want me to work it? Show you the car? Okay, so... We give a force F for four seconds, and it travels a distance of 10 meters. What if we apply half the force? What distance does it travel? Remember, F equals MA. So if I apply half the force, I have half the acceleration. X is equal to 1 half AT squared. I left off the V naught T because we have rest. We're at rest. So V naught is equal to zero. So if I have half the acceleration, then I travel half the distance. So whereas first I traveled 10 meters, now I'm going to travel 5 meters. Remember, too, like I could ask you also about the velocity. Like, what would the velocity be? Let's say after 4 seconds, we get up to a velocity equal to 20 meters per second. With this half the force, what will my velocity be after 4 seconds? Well, I say V is equal to V or V naught plus AT. V naught here is zero. And so if I have half the acceleration, I have half the velocity. So there's a linear relationship between X and A and a linear relationship between X or V and A. Notice, however, there's a quadratic relationship between X and T. So if I have half the time, I have a quarter of the distance covered. There were some problems in chapter three. Oh, actually, no, that's from uh, chapter four concept test. There are a lot of questions on there. Print those out, look through them. I, I did pull some questions verbatim from those tests, so you don't want to miss those. Okay. What else? Are you not to print them? We got them on your phone or whatever. Whatever you do. Um, what other questions? Is that Christian? The what problems? The height problem. Like which one? I'm sorry. Did you have a number? Okay, I think I'm. Can you repeat it though? 
Yeah, he asked, what if you have, we had this problem in class, and uh, there are some in the old test, with the big buck bunny, and he had the squirrel up like a kite. Uh, I think in, let's say that we have one force here, F1, one force here, F2. So let's say this is, I don't know, three newtons, and this is four newtons. And I want to know what force is required to make this thing not move. And I know that I have to have this force that is equal and opposite to the sum of those two forces. So I need a force F3 over here that exactly balances F1 and F2. And so it has to be equal but opposite to F1 plus F2. And so the way to find out the magnitude of F1 plus F2 is to say the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared of course that's a three four five triangle right so it's five meters um, and then if I wanted to know the angle well I would first find this angle and recognize that that's the same as that angle so it'd be the inverse tan of um, four over three which is 53 degrees I think that's right isn't it yeah, 53 degrees. That's all he's asking? Negative. It would be negative. 53 below the positive x-axis. Thank you. Or negative 53. Yeah, can, are we okay with it? Wait, is the inverse tan or the tan? Did you hear The inverse tan. Thank you. Okay, Christian, that answer your question? It's a good question. Which one? Uh, you're not going to have one with the degrees being different. There's a homework problem, I think, in the workbook where the degrees are different. And it, it's kind of complicated because you have to, uh, you have to solve a system of two equations with two unknowns. Okay, you can do this one. Sure. Yeah, it was in the workbook practice problems. And by the way, I think I pulled a question from those problems almost verbatim. So it's useful just to go through and look at those. I might have pulled more than one. Regardless, there are other questions that are similar to those. But the same process is what we've been doing. Draw my coordinate system. Uh, label the forces. I have one force here, one force here, and one force here. This is my weight. It's equal to 230 newtons. And then I have Ft here and Ft here. I'm going to distinguish between them, but we'll find that because the angles are the same, these two tensions are the same. They're, like, they're balanced out. But let's just keep them separate. And then also realize that both of these angles are 50 degrees. Let's redraw this. I'm going to resolve those forces. I have F weight. I have uh, F T L sine of 50, F T R sine of 50, and then over here I have F T R cosine 50 and F T L cosine 50. And what I can recognize here, everything's static. So this force has to equal this force. These forces have to equal that force because the sum of the forces is zero. Uh, looking at this, I can tell that FTL is equal to FTR. And that's what makes this problem easier to solve, that FTL is equal to FTR. And then I can look at the Y forces and say, I'm just going to call it FT twice sine 50 is equal to FW and then I solve for FT. 230 divided by 2 sine 50. 
and whatever that is, is the answer. Okay, but the key here is recognizing that these two forces are the same. And I did that by saying the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. That is FDR cosine 50 minus FTL cosine 50 is equal to zero. And then you can show that these two forces, FTL and FTR, are the same. And then, since they're the same, I just lump these two together, 2FT sine 50 equal to FW. And I can solve that then for FT. Okay. Try to make the test as easy as possible. Like I've told you everything on the test. You're going to have to work those projectile motion problems and those 2D force problems and the 1D force problems, and you're going to have the conceptual stuff. Uh, but it's not an easy test. So I, I know that, that many of you struggle with the algebra, and some of you are struggling with the concepts too. So uh, I don't want to scare you, but I do want to scare you just a little bit that this is usually the hardest test in the semester. And that's good news because it's sort of downhill after this. Chapter 5, 6, even 7, those are easier tests. Much, I think much easier. Well, not much easier, but a little bit easier. Okay? Yeah, Rachel. The rocket. Oh, yeah. Yeah, have a few more minutes. So, rocket, I'm just going to treat it like a box. There was, this was the OpenStax, you mean, right? Yeah. We had four rocket engines over here. Each of them had a thrust T. And then you had another force over here. I think it was like, I don't know, we'll just say 600 newtons. I don't remember what it was. And it told you that it was accelerating in this direction. Ah. I'm going to say 10. All right. 10 meters per second squared. Okay, and it asks, what is T? And then the mass was 1,000. Good 1D problem. Probably going to see one similar to it tomorrow. You say the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to MAX. That means uh, 4T, because there's four of them, and they're all given the force T, minus 600 equals 1,000 times AX. Oh, but A is given. 10. 1,000 times 10. I just drew it a little funky. Let's draw it over here. See, these are all pointing to the right. So I have 4T, and here I have 600. I just drew it that way. That's how they drew it in the assignment. Right, but they're pointing to the right. And I remember, I can move my vectors around as long as I keep the right magnitude and direction. And then I solve for T. Uh, 10,000 plus 600 divided by 4. 2,500 plus 150. 2,650, I think. Okay. Is that good? Y'all see something like that. Not, not that problem necessarily, but you'll see one very similar to that. All right, people, uh, I'll be around in the morning, but then I'm going to Baton Rouge at 8.30, so if you want to catch me in the morning, you need to come early.